This is about the uncertainties of coincidence. Let's suppose you had 100 people in a room and you got them to choose, each of them had to choose a random number, a number between 1 and 2,500. But I, I was going to say, make sure you all choose different numbers. You know, I want you all to try to choose different numbers, your own unique number. Now, it's between 1 and 2,500, so you'd think they'd all be able to choose different numbers. Let's see what happens. Now, this time we're just generating these at random from the computer. Let's see if there are any duplicates among this lot. Let's check, and what we find is that they do all choose different numbers. Let's see what happens. Let's try it again. Because, um, again, this is a, we don't know whether this is going to work or not. Let's check again. Where they choose. Yes, we've got two pairs here. Two have chosen 1712, two have chosen 1927. Let's see it again what happens. with another, another um, 100 numbers between 1 and 2,500. Let's check that. See what happens. Yes, there's a pair there, 965. Now, it turns out if we keep on doing this again and again and again, we're going to, most of the time... We're going to find some matches. We did it in the first time. It shows it doesn't always work. But in fact, seven out of eight times on average, about 87% of the time, we are going to find that we have at least uh, two people choosing the same number. And that seems quite remarkable. Now, there's a trick about this to remember. Exactly seven out of eight we, 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 got, we, we had matched there. Um, there's a trick about this to remember. If you've got N people in a room, how would you play this trick? Okay. What you do is take the number of people in the room, n, divide it by 2, n over 2, and then square that number, and then get them to choose a number between 1 and that number you finished up with. So, for example, if you just had 20 people in front of you, you say, OK, choose me a number between 1 and, well, you take 20, divide it by 2, you get 10, 10 times 10 is 100, and so you choose a number between 1 and 100. And you'll find that if they choose random numbers between 1 and 100, now, which is actually quite difficult to do because people have preferences for certain numbers, but if they do, they will, on average, you, seven out of eight times, they will not cho all choose different numbers. They will choose a pair. In fact, it'll be more than that because they do have preferences for certain numbers. So what happens if you've got a really big gang of people? Let's say you've got 400 people in the room. Well, 400 divided by 2 is 200. 200 times 200 is 40,000. Let's get them to choose between 1 and 40,000. Let's see what happens. OK, this is 400 numbers chosen at random between 1 and 40,000. It's quite difficult to see if there's any pairs. Fortunately, we've got the program to check it. Are there any duplicates? Are there? No, they did it. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. As I said, it doesn't always work, but seven out of eight times, there should be duplicates. Let's try it again. Yes, yes, look. Some, three lots, three lots of duplicates. Let's try it again. Let's see if it's going to work. Let's check it. Yes, two of them chose 40. So again, it doesn't always work, but seven out of eight times, there will be a duplicate. Now, this is just a, one result of the maths of coincidence. It just shows that if there's enough opportunities, there's so many pairs here, that, that exist, if there's enough opportunities for a rare event to happen, that rare event is very likely to happen. Um, if you want to see the maths of why this works and why that n over 2 trick, n over 2 squared trick works, you'll have to go and look at our website.